Perfect, thank you. Ashley asked, under normal circumstances, is there an average number of days in advance the course is the in advance of the course start that the payment is typically received? Uh, under normal circumstances, when we have a full staff, <laughs> we usually pay a couple of weeks in advance. So processing cases, my team is outstanding. They they actually um, you know are ahead of the game. They were they were actually a whole month ahead of the game. Um, but then finance has to come in and make their payments. And like I said, there was a, there's a shortage right now in finance. So they were at a point where it was two weeks in advance, a little over two weeks, depending on, you know, they kind of group them all and they make all these big payments. But uh, at, towards the end, when we were losing people, they were getting to where they were making some payments on the day of. Okay, and is financing complete via phone call or does the vendor email your finance team a link to make payments via CC credit card? Okay, so that, um, so that is actually a great question, right? Sometimes they're done via phone call. Sometimes it's an email. Like they will always email you and say, hey, I'm going to make a payment. Just know that I'm going to call. Uh, is all, you know, everyone good? Can we make a call to make a payment, right? And um, so as far as the link goes, that's a, there is, um, I'm trying to think how we did this, right? The way that can happen is that we notify you that, you know, Soder A, B, C, and D are needing to be funded. You can turn around and give us the link for each Soder, and then they can make the payment via credit card. And then hopefully that answers your question, Ashley. Um, and then Kevin asked, okay, perfect. Kevin asked, have you started approving applications for students who have start dates October 18th and thereafter? If not, when would the, you anticipate that process to start? We have already started the process for um, the 18th. So <laughs> funny story, right? There are actually, um, <laughs> There's a glitch in the system right now that was allowing soldiers to select the 18th well after uh, the cutoff date, which was September 2nd, right? So soldiers are still submitting these requests, though they're, uh, so it's kind of put our 18th, October 18th, to like over, I don't know, 1,600 uh, CA requests for the 18th. So it's, it's huge right now. Uh, but yes, we're getting through those slowly but surely. But I do want to address that that issue where there is um, a glitch in the system. Even though there's a glitch in the system, the, the soldier does sign the statement of understanding that states they must request a start date that is 30 business days out, right? So if they have not, there is a possibility, all of those soldiers that are requesting when they uh, less than 30 business days may get rejected, okay? It's a possibility. I'm not gonna confirm that that's gonna happen yet, but there is a possibility. But yes, Kevin, we have started. Uh, not approving, we always process and move to finance. Finance is the final approval. So when they make the payment, that's when it, the application is approved. Okay, we have 51 soldiers. Oh, awesome, thank you. Okay, uh, we have 51 soldiers in the queue already. The IOU process would only be for those soldiers for Only for those we move forward to finance. You would be notified of those 51 soldiers, maybe you know, 40, 40 of them get approved where the other, you know, whatever, 10 or nine, whatever, don't, right? So we will always give you a list of all the soldiers we are going to fund for this IOU process only. Make sense? Perfect. Okay, do I have any other questions before I turn it over? And I'll still be answering questions in the chat, um, but... Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I really appreciate all that you do for soldiers every day. You all are, you know, a huge part of the success of this program. So thank you very much. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Russell. Thank you. Thanks, Sophia. Greatly appreciate that. 
Um, and I know there was a question that just recently came up about the certificates of completion, and that was actually our next se section, so that all works out. Uh, so this is the new format that we came up with for certificates of completion to provide standardization across the board, an option for vendors without templates to be able to use uh, to ensure all of the Army CA requirements are filled out. If you already have a certificate of completion that your company uses and it meets all the requirements that I'm about to identify here, then you're more than welcome to continue to use your template. However, if you want to use this one, and we will be sending this out in an email along with the video links from this uh, training, the training slide deck, and a few other documents at the end, we're going to send all of that out to you. If you would rather use this one, you're more than welcome to. Again, we just created this to help those vendors out mainly who do not have templates or uh, any vendor who would want to move to this template in the future. So with the certificate of completion template, we're asking for a few different items that are mandatory for us to be able to see when we get a certificate of completion. The first thing is the soldier's name. The second, we want to make sure that we confirm the course or exam that the soldier took, the date that they started and ended their course date. We also want to make sure that your name, the vendor name, is on the training course or exam certificate of completion. Uh, we want you to identify if the soldier has completed or failed the course and also the, your signature and the date of completion. These are the mandatory things that we look for when we're looking at a certificate of completion. We've seen where we've had vendors in the past who didn't put a, uh, a, a date of completion on there. So we have to kick that back to the soldier and let them know we can't accept this because we don't know when it was completed and to be able to match it up against their dates that they requested for funding. So if you, again, if you're wanting to use this template and you don't already have something, please feel free to do so. We're going to send this out today along with the other information that I talked about. But if you already have a certificate of completion template that you're comfortable with using and you meet all the requirements, by all means, please continue to use your format if you'd like to do so. So your itemized price quote, the, this is the item that you're sending the soldier and this is what they're using to make their uh, credentialing assistance requests in Army Ignited. There's six key items on here that have to be on that itemized price quote. First and foremost is your company's name and address, then the date of the course and how long that quote is gonna be valid until, the soldier's name, what training is being provided, the itemization of everything that they're requesting. So again, these items must match what you already have on the Army Ignited platform in the application process. As Sophia previously identified, if a member is just looking to have um, one item and it's different, it's off of this main list, they can do a a, uh, a different type of application in the system. They can do a customized application, but uh, for the general pop that we see, the, this is going to be the format that we're going to be looking at, uh, making sure it has itemization. So if you have a quote in Army Ignited for training that costs $2,500, and below that training you list the books, the exam prep, the actual exam voucher, et cetera, and you have that all listed as zero, that should match on this itemized price quote. It should say the training, the total cost of $2,500, the books for $0, the exam prep, $0, the voucher, $0, and then at the very bottom, you should identify the total cost that should match that total cost that you have in Army Ignited. So again, this will be sent out as well in the slide deck. If you are uh, providing these to the soldiers already, great, thank you so much. If you haven't been, this is a resource for you to be able to look back at just to uh, cross your T's, dot your I's, and make sure that you're providing the right information to the soldiers so they can submit their, their car request. The 90 day shuffle, 
So some people have asked, what in the world are you talking about here? So we're going to get to that here for you. The annual review process is done every January or February each year. During that process, we want you to look through your application, make sure your cage code information is correct and not expiring soon. Make sure if you need to update your costs, this is the ideal time to do so. If there's been changes to your admin staff, i.e. your POCs, make sure you go ahead and change that. This is a great time to do all of that where there's no, there's nothing that stops you when you resubmit it back to us. However, we know there's situations throughout the year where costs could change, i.e. if you work with a university and your fiscal year doesn't begin until June, your costs may not change until that time frame. So what would you need to do? If you are providing an update for something that's already in the Army Ignited system in your application, you need to send us an email and let us know that you're requesting to make that change. We'll reply back to you and let you know that you're good to go to make that change, but you will have to wait 90 days before you can put that onto an itemized price quote. OK, now if you are decreasing the price or if you're adding an item onto your application that was not previously there, again, contact us. Let us know you need to make the changes. We'll send you an e email back that you're good to go but you do not have to wait 90 days to apply those items. So again, if you're decreasing the price or if you are uh, adding new items that weren't previously there, you do not have to have to wait the 90 days. And what we mean by the 90 days from the date that you submit that request to us to the date of implementation that cannot show up on their itemized price quote until at least 90 days after you submitted that request to us. Changes made without approval from Army CA will be disapproved. So we have instances where uh, I see in the pending list where a vendor has submitted a request to us, and I know that they've already done their annual review for the year, but haven't submitted anything to us telling us that they're making changes. We're going to disapprove that request and send it back to the vendor and let them know, hey, you need to go back in, you need to request them to make these changes, once we submit it back to you, then you can send the process through. That way we keep track of what you're changing, uh, what you're updating, and make sure everything matches in the system. So of course we get many questions on the Army CA program, but we wanted to highlight the top 15 that we get now. Definitely these are not end all be all questions. We know that there are hundreds more that we'll probably receive and we greatly appreciate every one of them because they help us streamline our processes and maybe look at things in a different way. But these are the top 15 that we got and we wanted to go over some of those with you and give you some answers to some of these to help you out with that. OK, number one, I have a TA account. Why can't I access the CA side? So just because you're in the Army Ignited system and you have a tuition assistance account, there has to be a separate account created for TA, for CA, for civilian credentials. Each one has to have its own section, uh, separate account. Again, uh, these are things that we're working through in the system, but as for right now, this is a requirement. So if you're looking to be a vendor on the CA side of the house or vice versa on the TA side of the house, you have to make sure that you have a separate approved account in each location. Number two, after the annual review, can I add more items or change my costs? As I previously mentioned uh, on the last slide, Yes, you can make those changes if it's the items that are already in the application. You have to wait 90 days before you can put those on your itemized price quote. If they're new items or you're decreasing the cost, you do not have to wait those 90 days. Number three, I was told that CA for aircraft certifications has changed. Is this true? Mrs. Sweeney identified this in the beginning a little bit. If you if it is an active duty soldier, they are only allotted one thousand uh, dollars for their CA for the for the aircraft certifications. If they're Air National Guard and Reserve, they're still eligible for the full four thousand. So make sure when you're talking to your soldiers that are coming through, you're asking these questions. Hey, are you uh, a National Guard member? Are you active duty? So you know how to properly support that member. 
Number four, how many exam vouchers credentials can I list on our training bundle? There can only be one exam voucher and or credential tied to any training bundle. Let's say you were offering the CompTIA suite of certifications, i.e. the Security Plus, Network Plus, uh, the different, there's quite a few of them out there. Now, if you offer a training that has all of those things within it, that's fine. However, you can only add one exam voucher. So if, you, if your training says the training covers Network Plus, Security Plus, uh, Data Plus, everything else on there, you can only have one voucher. So that would be maybe a Security Plus exam voucher. And then the soldiers would have to be able to add the other exam vouchers onto their request ad hoc. So remember, you can only put one item on there. Same thing for credentials. You can't say, well, I want to bundle these credentials into a, um, a group together and sell it as a package. We can't do that. The soldiers have to make sure that they submit a request for uh, one credential type individually. So they would have to submit one for the Security Plus, one for the Network Plus, and so forth. So make sure that when you're doing your training bundles, if you're offering those exam vouchers or the credentials, you're only adding one type in there for each one of those. All right. Hey, we have, have, we have one question. Yep, give me one second, let me read it for you. Roger that. Ashley asked, so to confirm additional resources updated in the annual review window do not require a 90 day wait period to be offered. Did I understand that correctly? You are absolutely correct, Ashley. As when we send you out the time frame in January of when your alphabet uh, window review will be, you'll have that time frame to look over your items, update your items, update your admin, your costs, so forth. And once that time frame is complete, we'll close it out and say that you, your time frame is passed and you are not held to that 90 day window within the annual review. It's it's those changes that have to be made after the fact. You're very welcome. That's all I have. Roger Dodger. All right, number five. Can soldiers request CA funding before my MOA is approved? So if you look back through your MOA, you'll see that is it is a requirement before a soldier ever sees what you offer to have an MOA on file as well as an approved application. Here's how the process goes. When we send you out the invite information, we will send you out a copy of the MOA. You fill out the MOA, make sure that you've got your company's name at the top, and then at the bottom, make sure that the MOA is signed by a member of your company's leadership, i.e. the CEO, the president, director, owner, someone who could be legally bound to that, that business and signing this requirement. You'll send that back to us. We will send it to our leadership to sign on our end. Once you submit your application into the system, I've got who I got there. OK, so once we uh, once you submit your application into the system, we will reach out to you after we've reviewed it. If it's good to go and we approve it, we will send you back an approval email and a signed copy of the MOA. So at that point, your application will be visible to soldiers in the field. If there's an issue with your application or things need to be changed, we will send you out an email to the person listed on your application as the POC. We will send an email to them explaining what the issue was that needs to be corrected. Let's see, number six. We had an employee change on our account. How do we update this? So I always recommend that you have at least one POC and one alternate in the office. That way in the event you have one person who's dedicated to working on the CA side of the house and they get a new job offer or they leave for other reasons, you have an individual who's also tied into the system that can go in and update with new names and everything. If you do not have that, Here's what I'd recommend you do. If you have a new individual who's going to be coming on board to work with your company in that position, have them submit a request into Army Ignited for a roles request. They can do that 
through ServiceNow. Once we get that request, we will tie their account that they've created to the main account for the company. Once that's done, then that individual will be able to go in and make changes to the application. So again, I always say keep at least at least one alternate on hand, someone who's already uh, approved as a uh, and is linked to that account. That way they can go in and make changes to the account as need be. But any new individuals that you get to the company, just make sure that they submit to us a request for a roles request in Army Ignited via ServiceNow, and we'll tie them to the main account from there. Number seven, I am retired military. Am I okay to go on posts and talk about the training I offer? Mrs. Sweeney hit on this a little bit earlier as well. You are more than welcome to go on the post and go shopping at the, the BX or the PX and go do MWR functions, things that your ID card gives you access to do. However, when it comes to talking about what your company offers and what type of training you offer and things that you, you would like to receive government funding for, you need to go through first and request installation access uh, via Army Ignited. And then after that, speaking with the education office, they will give you authorization through an installation access to be able to come on post and make those discussions with soldiers available. Please do not do this without their authorization. Doing so could void you being eligible to participate in the Army CA program. Number eight, how long does the approval process take? So, we go into the Army's, uh, Army Ignited platform every single day. And we update the pending applications that we have sending out there. Either we approve them or we disapprove them, send the message back to the vendor. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of the holdup is actually on the vendor side, if you believe that, uh, because because when vendors submit their their for their account, they forget to go back in and create an application, and that's where we've seen a lot of the holdup has held vendors back. So make sure when you go through the process and you're creating your application, and again, we'll send out the slides for this training and they will actually have the other slides attached to it with the how to process. But when you go in and you submit and create that account in Army Ignited, you have to go back into the system after you submit your MOA to us and then go and create an application. That way we can review it, approve it, and then you'll be viewable to the soldiers in the field. Uh, OK. Any questions so far? Uh, nothing in the queue. All right. Number nine, are there local post representatives that can make my process go faster? No. The, the team that Mrs. Sweeney identified to you earlier, as far as myself and Ms. Sanders and, and Dottie working on the, the vendor side, and then the team that does the vetting and the team that does the finance. This is your Army CA team. So if someone comes up to you and tells you that, hey, if you reach out to this person uh, at this post, they'll be able to make it go faster for you, that is not true. We are your points of contact. Also, and this brings up a good uh, point here, we have a We've had instances here as a recent where a third party entity has come in and said, well, if you put my name on your, your company's account, it'll help your process go faster. Again, this is not true. If an individual is not tied to your company physically, do not add them on to your application. Just by name recognition does not help your process go any faster. We bring them in first in, first out, and review everyone thoroughly. So make sure that if they are not physically a part of your, your company, do not add them to your company roster. All right, number 10. Do we have to submit a certificate of completion? If so, who do we send it to? Per the MOA, yes, you are required to submit a certificate of completion. Again, you're more than welcome to use the template that we uh, showed you earlier, 
or use your own as long as it meets the requirements that are necessary to be in the certificate of completion. You can send those to our email link that will actually be at the end of the, the slideshow here. You can send those directly there or even if you have my email or Miss Sanders emails, because I'm sure you've probably seen a lot of emails come from us. You can send that MOA back over to us or you can send the certificates of completion to us. Now, what we recommend first, however, is you send that certificate of completion to the soldier. You can courtesy copy us on it, but the soldier is going to be the one as of right now that needs to go in and update that information on their profile. In the near future, once we have the vendor portal, you guys will be able to go in there and you'll be able to upload it for each one of the soldiers that you had to come through and help expedite that process. But until then, make sure that it's sent to the soldier and you can courtesy copy us on, on it as well. Number 11. If I'm a vendor for the Army CA program, does that mean I am on the other services as well? No, each of the services has its own credentialing program. The Army has Army CA. Uh, the other services have their Army Cools. Uh, as of right now, the only services that are paying for training uh, would be the Army and the Air Force. The Coast Guard is dabbling in it and looking at it a little bit, but nothing's uh, gone solid with them yet. But if you are interested in being a part or of any of the other services, I would recommend reaching out to that website that you have right there, www.cool.osd.mil. When you link on that page, it will actually show every one of the branches teams uh, on, on their all their cool pages. And then you'll be able to link on there and look and see what they offer and then contact them individually to see if you can be a part of their process. Number 12, can I just find a credential that I think relates to the training we offer? No, the first step in adding a credential is making sure that that credential is listed in Army Cool. So again, you can use that website that I just gave you right there above. Go find the Army Cool page, select the search credential, and look for the credential that goes directly with the training that you offer. If it does not correlate, do not try to match it because we will review it, we'll find it, we'll disapprove it because it doesn't make sense to have a PMP certification when the training you offer is for firefighting um, or something that may not be listed on the Army CA side. So if it is not listed on the Army Cool uh, page, the recommendation for there is to go to menu, go to contact us, and then it will give you an option to request that a credential be added. And you can put the information there and it can be submitted for review. Okay, number 13. Where can soldiers see if we are an approved vendor? So there's actually two key spots where a soldier will see this. First of all, on the Army Cool page, if they go under the credentialing assistance section, they will see a approved vendor list that's updated monthly on that site. The approved vendor list, the credentials that were removed from the, uh, the credentialing programs, you can download each one of those Excel spreadsheets right there, and it's available there. The second spot that a soldier would be able to see your, your location is once they go in and they select a certification, say they want to go after the, the PMP, they select that certification in Army Ignited, and then it's going to give them the option of all the credentialing agencies, all the vendors, excuse me, that offer that resource. So it gives the soldier the opportunity to shop and see who offers what's best for what they need and then select that vendor to proceed forward. Number 14, can our company have multiple people with access to our Army United account? Like I said before, you're definitely welcome to have as many people as you want tied to the account. Just make sure you as a, a business leader are aware of who's got control of your application, who's allowed to make changes to that application. That way, if there's any concern, you know who directly to go to who made changes to your application. And number 15. Yes, ma'am. There's a question from Monet Thomas. Can we edit our application and add new pro programs at any time? Good question. So if you are adding new programs, 
Uh, again, all you need to do is send us an email and say, hey, we are adding this new program to our application. We will respond right back to you and say, yep, go ahead. Uh, we'll, we look forward to seeing your application. When you submit it through, you do not have to wait those 90 day, days if it's a new item that you're submitting or if it's a decrease in pro, uh, price. You'll only have to wait for the 90 day window if, if you're changing the price of something that increases the price of something that's already listed on your application. That was a great question, thank you. You're very welcome. All right. Any more before I go on? Nope, we're good there. Okay. Number 15, I don't have a cage code. Can you create one for me? So we do not have access to create cage codes in the system. You have to go to the sam.gov site, sam.gov. Go to their website, register to get a cage code, your DUNS code, get all that information updated. Once they respond back to you and provide you with your cage code, then you can start your application process on the Army Ignited side. Please note that your application needs to be reviewed and updated uh, each year as far as your cage code is concerned. So a good time to do this is during the annual review. Check your cage code. If you know your cage code is gonna be expiring in the next couple weeks or so, or even the next month or so, go ahead and get that updated. We actually had a member from the last call who gave us some great information regarding the cage code that if you're going in and the cage codes are normally good for five years until they have to be reviewed. However, if you're going into the system and you're updating and making sure your information is up to date each year during the annual review, your cage code will renew at that time in SAM.gov. So again, make sure your cage code is good. If you are having issues updating your cage code on your application, you need to submit a ServiceNow ticket to the technical team and let them know that you're having issues updating your cage code, and they'll be more than happy to reach out to you and help you get that situated. All right. So some important takeaways from today, recap. Again, uh, there's some policy changes and everything coming down the pipeline. There's a lot going on right now, so we ask that you continue to be patient with us. Certificates of completion, that template's free to use if you'd like to. If you already have one and it meets all the requirements, go for it. But if you'd like to use the new one, we'll be sending that out this afternoon along with the other links. Uh, update your cage codes. Make sure you're checking on those. Make sure they're, they're good and current. If they're coming due, go ahead and get them updated. Itemize price quotes. Make sure you provide all the required information that's necessary for those. Your FAQs, again, these were only 15 of them that we received, but there's many, many more. If there's something that you see and you, you think, hey, this might help you guys, or I have a question about this, please feel free at any time to shoot us an email. We are more than happy to answer them for you to help you get the answer that you're looking for. Uh, we need your success metrics. So if you guys are seeing where uh, soldiers are passing your courses or you're seeing where individuals are getting job offers in the civilian sector based off of training that you're offering, let us know about that because that's going to be great resources that we can turn around and provide to the Office of Secretary of Defense and to the Pentagon to let them know how effective these programs are and how they're helping our soldiers. So if you've got them, please share them. And of course, no 90 day wait if you're lowering the costs or adding brand new items onto your applications. But if it's an item that's already previously there and you're increasing the cost, you do have to wait 90 days to put that new cost on the itemized price quote. So we've had a great session this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open up the floor for the next uh, 14 minutes that we have on the clock. And we're going to turn it over to you to let you ask some more questions if you have any. Um, we look forward to hearing from you and thank each and every one of you for being a part of this and being a part of the Army CA program. And if you have questions, you can write up in the chat box or you can raise your hand and we will get you answered. But ladies and gentlemen, the floor is yours. All right, so we have one here. So for upping our costs, we have to wait until we do the annual review in January. 
you can do your annual, you can do your cost increase in January, but if you have to update during the year, you would send us an email, let us know that you're needing to make the change, and then you wouldn't be able to put them on the itemized price quote uh, until 90 days prior, unless the soldier is doing a, uh, I just had a brain fart there, uh, a, an individual um, application. Sophia, I just had a, a brain drop there. Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't even catch. I'm sorry. I was. I so was so if a soldier, if soldiers going in and requesting a uh, a CA request um, uh, outside of the normal CA request. You mean like a custom request? Yeah, that's the wonderful word I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> My brain was sitting there like, what in the world? A custom CA request. <laughs> if they're doing a custom CA request, then they can put it in there. Um, but again, if you're doing it for your normal day-to-day -day items and items that are listed in Army Ignited, you need to make sure that you wait at least those 90 days before you put them on the price quotes. Thanks. Thanks, Sophia. No problem. All right. Um, can you hold on? Can you paste the email address in the chat so we can copy it? Yes, uh, I actually did that already. It's let me let me get it again. But there is a change. Um, it had though the one that's in the uh, screen on the screen right now. It can be used still, but we are changing. All soldiers are changing, and boxers are changing their last part of it where it says mail dot mail. It's all changing to. Uh, army dot mail. Find it. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that one's done. Next one, how far out does the soldier need to request? So uh, they only need to request 30 business days prior to the start date, meaning no holidays, no weekends. So it's really like 42 to 45 days in advance from the actual start date that they wanted to for that course. Nicole asks, Emails are being sent to an ex-employee. I have changed the me being the main POC and have updated the company file to me. But how do I correct the emails? Example, this training reminder went to her and not to my email. So, Nicole, I got you on our new list. Um, so we update this. Russell and I update uh, with new names every time. Um, you can email the box and let us know who needs to be removed. That way, the, uh, Dottie can go into the approved vendor list to make sure it's uh, changed there. And then pilot jobs are becoming a need again. The industry is and will be in need of pilots. I'm sure all is aware. This just wanted to add. Thank you, Cody. Understood. Um, but I will tell you that the credentialing assistance program is a retention program, so we're not trying to lose soldiers. <laughs> we're just trying to enhance their skills and abilities while in the military, though it does help them on the outside. So thank you for that. And then, so if a price, is, price increases would be effective January 1st for the rest of our operations, should we submit the request that, cha that change in October or would updates made in January be effective in January, Russell? So if it's your annual review and you're making your update in January, then it would be effective in January. You wouldn't have to wait that 90 days. Again, the 90 day wait would only be after the annual review process is complete. Okay, uh, Ashley, all right, let me answer this one. Can I go back to the financial financing piece? So to confirm your team will contact us via phone or email to make payment on the soldier's behalf with a credit card. 
And once we receive this contact from your team, we, the vendor, can send an email with a distinct link for your financing team to use to make a credit card payment. Then once your team completes the process, we can follow the disclosure to have them complete the registration process. So I'm pretty sure, let me see if there's anyone on here from finance. Tisha, are you on? On LaDonna? Okay, they're not on, but the answer to that would be, um, most, yes, almost always they send you an email to let you know in advance that, hey, we've got, um, you know, these soldiers, we need to pay, right? And once they do that, once they do that, you can return the email with the codes or the links for each soldier so that they know they can go in and make that payment that way, okay? And then I've searched, but I've been unable to locate the documentation on the exact requirements relating to making payments. So we're wondering if we can automate portions of this process or if there are limitations, requirements that we are unaware of. So Ashley, I will ask that you send me an email uh, with all of your questions here. That way it can come directly from the finance team. Um, that would probably be the best thing. So send me an email or you can send it to the box and, and put it attention to me, and then I'll, I'll go from there. Okay, Nicole, if you could just send, Nicole, if you didn't send this on an email, if you could, that would be great. And then um, our, our video, will the handouts be sent to us? Russell? Yes, at the end of training, I'm going to send you uh, all the training. I'm going to send you the slide deck that we use today as well. It'll have the additional slides that are hidden right now that you'll be able to see and utilize. It'll have the links from both of the training sessions today. It will have the um, the certificate of completion templates and everything. I'm going to put the DOD guidance in there for using the insignias and everything. I'm going to send you guys out a, a whole kit and caboodle of information here in just a little bit. Anything else? Nope. Uh, I think we can close it up if no one else has any questions. Awesome. Well, perfect. We're going to give you five minutes back toward the the end of your Fridays, ladies and gentlemen, uh, heading into the weekend and closing out the last of the fiscal year 21. So thank each and every one of you for being a value part of what we do for our soldiers. Without you, the job would be pretty difficult uh, to get this accomplished for them. So thank each and every one of you for helping us make this process seamless. Thanks for uh, participating with us. And as always, your CA DJ, Russell Gray, thanks for what you do, and we'll see you on the next run. Take care. Great job, Russell.